All right, so we're back with the only game where you can eat your entire fridge by dislocating your jaw, go to work, and set the entire place and everyone you know on fire. It's Kyle is famous. More self-immolation, damn it. Once again, we are Kyle and we are famous. Our job is to go through our day attempting to interview Rachel May while ruining the lives of everyone around us because we're a complete psychopath. The last time, I, I never even got to interview Rachel May. I just made her in fear of her life and made her question my sanity repeatedly. But this time, God damn it, we're gonna do our interview. I say that, we'll probably end up dying. You always want to write down the most important questions. I'm not gonna lie, between eating a raw egg whole and mashing or blending beef, it's kind of hard to choose. I'm going with the egg though. I know this key is here for some reason. So, I went to check the pantry, just figuring there would be something to eat inside of it, like some dead bodies, considering how this game works. And I can actually use the key in the pantry. I must know. The pantry door lock creaked as if it hadn't moved in years but eventually it opened. Here we go, time to get the sinner's blood. Instead of an assortment of canned goods and grains, Kyle's pantry stored his massive amount of bottled lard. Ignore the pantry. Chug a bottle of lard. <laughs> you can grab a bottle, but honestly, don't you half-ass this. If you're gonna grab a bottle of lard, you chug it. Kyle voraciously grabbed the closest bottle, snapped the neck against the wall, and sucked out all of the fat within a minute. It's like a Florida man smashing open a Bud Light and trying to die, but instead of, you know, alcohol poisoning, we're trying to get heart disease. Wait, can you chug more lard? Kyle wildly sucked down another bottle. He felt very sick. Vomit on the floor and stop. Bullshit, we're stopping. Chug another one. Kyle's vomit and lard. We're mixing in a way to make it hard to tell which was which. God, finish off the whole pantry. How many bottles were there? As Kyle finished the last bottle of lard, a wave of accomplishment came over him. The last time we came to the tech store, we stole Techno Jim and he ended up getting set on fire and burning down our state. But this time I'm gonna get these free samples and see what happens. The attendant gave Kyle a confused and slightly vacant look. Kyle began to beg for a free sample. Wanting Kyle to leave, the attendant grabbed a decrepit phone meant for spare parts and held it out. Grab with hand or grab with teeth. These teeth just drank like 80 gallons of lard. A cell phone is nothing to me. Kyle firmly clamped down his mouth around the outstretched phone, creating several teeth holes in the screen. Kyle grunted and yanked with his head until the attendant let go of the phone. The phone is now Kyle's to use forever. Am I just gonna keep it in my mouth? It's actually an item at the top of the screen. Kyle hurried to the set. Rachel smiled quickly turned to shock as she realized Kyle had not put on any clothes that day. I forgot to go into the closet. It's interesting that we went to the tech guy and he never mentioned anything about our nudity. Honestly, whatever, it's good for ratings. Kyle waved and smiled broadly. Rachel uncomfortably averted her eyes. I'm waiting for so many things to go wrong here. Kyle started making his rounds around the room greeting each crew member, none of whom looked at him directly. Come on, crew members, there's nothing to be ashamed of. We've all been naked together before. As it became apparent that Kyle had no intention of leaving, Rachel made some excuses and exited the set. Son of a bitch. One by one, the crew followed suit. Kyle was left all alone. Kyle prepared by being a nudist. No, I think it asked my question. Browse social media, this is new. Oh, it's because I still have the cell phone in my mouth. Kyle started to scroll through the news articles on his phone. Stay up late with Kyle, ranked number one and number two show on television. New East Bridge being constructed after being found to not actually exist. Authorities investigating. So everyone in the entire world of Kyle is famous is stupid. It's not just me. One of the articles just mentioned that there was like a robbery and the robber is going to leave the country for a very, very long time. And now Rachel May is going to leave the country for a very, very long time. Now I think I know why one of the questions that you can ask her is, are you guilty? Kyle fails to show up to several charity events. Y'all are lucky I put on clothes when I come to my show. Kyle's phone explodes in his hands from overuse. Son of a bitch. Last time I ate the fridge, there's an option here to prepare breakfast. 
There is no way in hell he will prepare a normal breakfast. Kyle constructed a breakfast of poached eggs and toast, along with small fruit cup and grilled sandwich. Why does it eat or smash? What happens if you smash it? Kyle smashed his breakfast to a pulp using both fists. Okay, I've got everything I need. It's finally time to confront Rachel May, that thieving whore. Is your mother a mother? So, said Kyle, my mother is my mother. My mother's mother is her mother, and my mother's mother. And many mothers have mother's mother's mother. Is your mother a mother? I believe, she said eventually, that I should answer yes. This is a great icebreaker question. At this point, she should know that she shouldn't be here. Kyle asked another question. Have you ever eaten a raw egg whole? Um, like shell and all, asked Rachel. Kyle continued, I have, like a lot. It's really bad though, so sometimes I spit it back up. Just like a bird, Kyle likes to spit up his raw eggs and feed them to his little Kyles. There was a silence. But actually, it gets easier the more you do it, continued Kyle, without losing momentum. So don't start, I say. Rachel chose not to answer and look in another direction. Ah, something a guilty woman would do. Do you ever smile? Do you ever smile? Like seriously, Kyle spat his question out viciously. Rachel stopped smiling. If you're going to be on the show, you need to smile, okay? Said Kyle. Not smiling. I appreciate that Kyle is so socially inept that he breaks through the floor of stupid and lands on the top of genius. You're here to get views, and you'll get more views if you smile. Here, I'll show you how. Oh, God, no. Kyle turned to the camera and gave the audience a huge, teeth-clenched, bug-eyed grimace. Rachel nodded and obviously wanted to move on. This isn't really much of an interview. Rachel just sits there and nods every once in a while, blissfully unaware of how close Kyle is to sending her to prison. Are you guilty? Rachel, are you guilty? Kyle threw his questions on the floor, stood up and pointed at her. Rachel's eye twitched slightly. Guilty of what, dear Kyle? She smiled disingenuously. Guilty, spat Kyle. Of your crimes. <laughs> this is what you get for not having any gluten-free options in your cookbook, woman. Rachel did not answer. Her eyelids both started twitching uncontrollably. Call the police! We're calling the police. You're going to prison, Rachel. You come on my show, don't look at my nude body, and end up walking out? I don't think so. Kyle put out his phone and dialed the police. Hold the music! Hello, police, said Kyle. I believe I have found a criminal. Rachel began to run toward the exit. On her way out, she swatted Kyle's phone out of his hand. Let her go or trip her. You're not getting away. Kyle stuck out his leg. Rachel stumbled and crashed to the floor. But in a moment, she was on her feet. She drew a blunt weapon seemingly out of thin air and started to swing at Kyle. Joke's on you, Rachel. You can't give Kyle brain damage because the wheel's turning, but the hamster ain't there. Before Kyle had a chance to react, a figure burst through the roof and blocked Rachel's attack. Is it going to be Bug Girl? It was a middle-aged woman in a bug-shaped mask. She was brandishing a bug-shaped stick. I think I understand now why Kyle's show rates number one and number two. This is like Jerry Springer, but the only refreshments and snacks that we give anyone involved is methamphetamine. The woman began to fight with Rachel, flicking her weapon back and forth with surprising speed. Rachel tried to fight back but it was obvious she was no match for the interceptor. I was gonna say that Rachel needs to go to prison, but honestly, if you just beat her to death, that's fine too. With one quick move, the bug vigilante drew her foot high above her head and drove it straight into Rachel's hand. Middle-aged woman be doing some yoga. The weapon clattered to the floor. Rachel attempted to run again, but she was met with a stick to her legs. That's right, Rachel, you just got kneecapped because that's how the mafia works. She fell at the feet of a police officer, just arriving from Kyle's call. I like how I called her out, didn't have any evidence at all, and this turned into a freaking free-for-all on the show. Rachel was charged with seven cases of grand larceny. After her first month in jail, Rachel started a reality TV show filmed in her cell about prison cooking. There's nothing quite as appetizing as mixing Cheetos and syphilis. The show gained immense popularity and somehow the public began to love Rachel all the more. Kyle made guest appearances on Rachel's show many times. 
The sad part is this sounds like something that could really happen. The identity of the bug vigilante was never known. She remained a mysterious but important part of local law enforcement. The end. Rachel started a new show. I've never scavenged for resources. Kyle began to comb through the damp piles of filth and mold on his floor in search of helpful items. I noticed that there's never a bathroom option for us to go into, so I imagine he's just been urinating and defecating inside of his room. After finding and eating a few bits of crumbs and old cheese, Kyle found something much more important. Here we go, finally. Something that we can get to open up the door. Indeed, it was the corpse of Harry. A friend that had gone missing years ago while at Kyle's house. There's a goddamn dead body in the room. How do you miss it? Kyle was glad to see him again, but was unsure of whether to interrupt such an important day with Harry business. Leave him for another time or deal with him. Obviously, we have to pick this deal with Harry. Kyle hoisted Harry onto his shoulder and took him outside. Kyle began dragging Harry's body down the street, drawing many, many stairs. Kyle knew exactly where he needed to take Harry's corpse. On a lovely place, <laughs> just the two of them. Kyle and Harry started at the arcade. Kyle used Harry's arms to operate the joysticks and push the buttons. There is a number score every game has for insanity and we went past 11 now. We're at about a 13. I start to feel uncomfortable at around nine. <laughs> After five or six different games, the two friends had enough tickets for a single candy bar. This game is so relatable, it hurts. I mean, not you know because we're using a dead body as a sock puppet, but because you can play all these games forever and you can only get a candy bar. They took their prize to the local park for eating. Kyle tried to feed some of the chocolate bar to Harry, but Harry seemed to not have an appetite because he had been dead for six years. After eating, Kyle noticed a nearby playground. He dragged Harry over because one thing that we haven't done yet is traumatize any juveniles. Kyle tried to figure out a way to swing Harry on the swing set, but lacking the ability to grip, Harry kept falling out. It's like Weekend at Bernie's. I don't even know how many people watching this have seen that movie. Instead, Kyle started to lug Harry to the top of the slide and shove him down time and time again. Something that you have to note is that we're playing on all these items and like we're leaving pieces of decomposing body on the slide for the children. <laughs> Finally, Kyle took Harry to the movies to see as many popular films as their pocket change allowed. Kyle quickly found that he had no pocket change, so he searched through Harry's corpse until he found his wallet. We're already desecrating his dead body. We might as well rob his ass too. Kyle bought two tickets to a love romance. After getting inside, Kyle left Harry to go find a restroom. By the time Kyle finished using the restroom, he had forgotten he brought Harry along. The dead body's just sitting there at the romance. Kyle watched the love romance by himself, and Harry's corpse sat on the bench in the atrium. While Kyle was in the movie, a beautiful thing happened. Harry's corpse imbued with the power of friendship and love was reanimated. Oh my God, we have zombie Harry. Harry's old rotten flesh gained color and life. His fingernails regrew and his missing eye came back. I thought he was gonna maintain like his rotting exterior, but he's actually turned into a real human being again. By the time the movie was over, Harry was able to greet Kyle with a large friendly hug as his old self. Kyle was confused, but delighted that his long lost friend met him on his way out of the theater. I don't need to bash my head against the wall to gain short-term amnesia because Kyle, I think, was born with this. The two made plans to get drinks together and parted ways for the day. Kyle returned home, forgetting about the interview with Rachel. He just never even went back to the original game. Well, I'm gonna have to agree with Kyle. Juggling a dead body until the love and friendship reanimated it was actually better than interviewing Rachel. I'm glad that we did this together. Anyway, folks. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Kyle is Famous. Till next time, stay foxy and much love.